Osmosis is the diffusion of water down a concentration gradient through a selectively permeable membrane. Water will diffuse from a region of high water concentration to a region of low water concentration by a selectively permeable membrane. Net movement of water will stop once both regions have the same water concentration. Water movement is still happening, remember? It is just equal in both directions. We say that equilibrium has been reached. Here are some key points you need to understand regarding osmosis. The highest possible concentration of water is found when you have pure water. When solutes are added to water, like salt for example, they lower the water concentration. So a region of pure water, high water concentration and low solute concentration, will diffuse into a region of salty water so low water concentration and high solute concentration by a selectively permeable membrane. A selectively permeable membrane is a membrane which allows water molecules through, but not the solute that is dissolved in the water. Without this selectively permeable membrane, osmosis won't occur. Cell membranes act like selectively permeable membranes because water is small enough to pass through the membrane and additionally, they have special pores to let water through called aquaporins. Don't worry, you only need to know that cell membranes are selectively permeable. If you remember that plant cells have vacuoles that push the cell contents against the cell wall when they are full of water, then if you place a plant cell into water that has a lower water concentration than the inside of the cell, the water will leave the cell via osmosis and cause the vacuole to pull away from the cell wall. The vacuole will refill with water once you place it back into a solution with a higher water concentration than the inside of the cell. We will now look at an experiment that demonstrates what happens when we put plant cells into different concentrations of water. The goal is to find out what is the water solute concentration of the inside of the cell. Measuring the change in mass of potato strips before and after placing them into solutions with different water concentrations, we can get the following results. You can easily get a similar graph in an exam question, but just with a different context. The key is to be able to interpret the results, describe the direction the water has moved in, and be ready to use all the correct terminology regarding osmosis. If the potato mass has gone up after being in the solution, then the solution has a higher water concentration compared to the inside of the potato cells. The water has moved into the potato cells across the selectively permeable membrane of the cells in a process called osmosis. The scientific term for a solution that has a higher water concentration than the inside of the cell is a hypotonic solution. If the mass of the potato strip has gone down, then the solution has a lower water concentration compared to the inside of the potato cells. The water has moved out of the potato cells across the selectively permeable membrane of the potato cells via a process called osmosis. The scientific term for a solution that has a lower water concentration than the inside of the cell is a hypertonic solution. If the mass has not changed, then this means no net movement of water has occurred across the selectively permeable membrane of the cell via osmosis, and therefore the system is in equilibrium. This must mean that the solution has the same water concentration as the inside of the potato cells, and a scientific term for this type of solution is called isotonic. On a side note regarding animal cells, because they have no cell wall, it means placing an animal cell into a hypotonic solution, like pure water, can cause the cell to burst. In the next video, we will look at active transport.